Hello and Happy New Year. Welcome to episode 64 of Namaste Yoga. This week we're beginning a new series of classes on the chakras and their archetypes. And we're very lucky to have this beautiful um, stamped painting done by my friend and artist and yoga instructor Sandy Collins. This uh, painting depicts the chakras in the body, the chakra energy centers in the body. So I'm just going to go through those really quickly for you. There's tons of information out there available on them if you're not sure about them that you can Google about. And um, I highly recommend Anadea Judith's books on the topic too if you want to learn more about them. So it, you can see at the base of the, the chakra system is the root chakra, the one that's depicted in red here. This is at the base of your spine. And then in the center of your pelvis is the sacral chakra, the orange one. And then uh, just above your navel is the solar plexus chakra, the yellow one. And the green one is at your heart, your heart chakra. The bright blue one is at your throat, that's your throat chakra. And then the indigo colored dark bluey purple one is at your third eye, that's the... And then there's one more included that's not included in this painting and that is a purple colored one that's considered the crown chakra that's above your head. So we're going to um, the uh, seven weeks looking at the energy centers in your body and we're going to do a little different twist on these because I find that the the chakras get done a lot in classes and so what I wanted to work with was the chakras and their archetypes based on Jung's research on archetypes and our way for our way of understanding um, in the world works around archetypes. So for today's practice you're going to need um, if you have two blocks that would be great you will also need a tie if you have one. If you don't, you can use a robe or a tie. And if you have a blanket that you can fold up um, to sit up on, we'll be using that a little bit as well. So I'm gonna use mine right now to sit and you can rest back and lie down on your back for Shavasana for some centering to begin. Take a deep breath in through your nose and let it fall out of your mouth. And just begin to allow your body to settle in. You may want to place your hands on your legs just to connect to your root chakra. Your root chakra includes your legs and your feet and the very base of your spine with the perineum and the tailbone and the pubic bone. <clears throat> So the root chakra, the archetype that we're going to work with today with the root chakra is the Mother Earth archetype. If you think about it, the root chakra has to do with our ability to survive on this planet, to be able to meet all our basic needs from food and clothing and shelter, to be able to live comfortably and provide a means of living for ourselves. And so the Mother Earth archetype reflects this. This is the archetype that is associated with the root chakra. If you consider the earth, the earth provides the soil to grow our food. The earth's trees and forests give us oxygen to breathe. The earth's waters, rivers, rains provide us with water for our body and also for our food. The sun also gives us nourishment and helps us grow our food. So Mother Earth is very much here to help us survive and everything that we need is available through Mother Earth. So this chakra and its archetype is in a lot of need of healing in our culture. There has been a lot of excess in this chakra and in our relationship to the Earth. So we have tended to take too much from the earth. We hoard things and we are greedy about things. And so what ends up happening is that the resources have been depleted. And we can see this in our own bodies. Our bodies are a reflection. They're a microcosm of the larger macrocosm of the world we live in. So you can see this greed and excess in our own bodies as it shows up as obesity, one of the major problems in North America here right now that causes many, many health problems. 
So as we heal our earth, we'll heal our bodies. And Anandaya Judith says to heal our relationship to our bodies is to heal our relationship with the earth. When we change the body of the earth, we are able to perpetuate our survival. And so we need to bring these two things back into balance a lot more and reconnect with our bodies and then reconnect with our earth. So as you rest back here, begin to really feel your physical body. Feel your feet, your ankles, your lower legs, your knees, your upper thighs, your pelvis, your low back, your rib cage, your shoulders, let the back of your neck soften, allow your head to sink back into the ground, feel your arms heavy on the ground, and just allow your body to really sink and release to gravity. And with each breath out, exhale deeply into the earth. Let your body sink and be received by the earth's pull. And as you rest back here, supported by the earth, begin to reflect on your intention for today's practice. So because we are at the beginning of the year, you may want to bring in your intention for 2011. Perhaps you have an intention that you want to bring, into, bring to life this year. Or perhaps there's something you want to do to heal your relationship with your body and to increase your connection with the Mother Earth archetype. So just take a moment and set an intention for what you would like to receive in your practice today. And when that feels complete, you can begin to wiggle and stretch out a bit and you'll want to um, reach for your strap to begin. So we'll continue to stay lying down on our backs here. And take your strap with a loop around the bottom of the strap and place it around your right foot. And just draw your right leg in towards your chest. Really open up the space in the back of your leg and sink down through the back of your pelvis. So imagine gravity drawing the top of your leg bone here into the ground. And allow other parts of your body to continue to sink and drop here as well. So your shoulders, your head. And then keeping your left hip and your left leg heavy and long on the ground, begin to open your right leg out to the side. And then bring your right leg back center again. And you can start to cross your right leg over your body, but keep the back of your pelvis on the ground. So you won't need a big crossover. It's 
pretty good um, sensation will happen pretty much immediately as you begin to cross this leg over. Then you can bring your leg back center and release it down to the ground. Take a deep breath in and let it go. Okay, and once you've got your right leg down, just feel the difference between your two legs. And particularly, I want you to feel for the sense of groundedness and rootedness of your right leg, the way it's sinking and dropping into the ground a little bit more. And then you can hook up your left foot and open up the back of your left leg. And again, really keep the back of your pelvis sinking and dropping into the ground. And continue to notice what's happening with your breath. Allowing your exhalation to sink you and drop you into the ground a little bit more. And then open your, your left leg out to the side, keeping your right hip sinking and dropping, right leg reaching down. And then bring your left leg back center and start to cross it over your body again. Doesn't need to be a big cross. You want the back of your pelvis to stay on the ground and just feel that sensation all along your IT band along the outside of your left leg. Okay, and then release your left leg to the ground. And just check in with your body and see if it's, if it's, especially your legs, your legs and your feet, just notice how they're dropping into the ground a little bit more, maybe a little less braced, a little more grounded. And then bend your knees and place your feet flat on the floor here. You're going to place your feet hip bone width apart, so at your hip bones here with your feet parallel, and you're gonna really feel your feet on the ground. And then sink your feet into the ground, and as you sink your feet into the ground, your pelvis will lift up. So something that's very common that happens here is that I watch my students with their knees go out to the side here. So this doesn't really allow you to feel your root chakra or your connection to the ground. So really, practice staying on the inside edges of your feet. You'll really feel your legs then. And one way to do this that works really well is to take your block or um, something like that and place it between your legs to hold it up there like that.
and then slowly lower yourself down. You can release the block and hug your knees into your chest. Okay, so now you can either roll to your side or rock yourself up. And we're going to do a series um, for your feet. So if you want to sit, it can be nice if you sit up on, here's your blanket is useful here. You can sit up on a blanket. Um, or you can sit with your back against the wall. Or, or you can have your hands behind you to support you. So with your feet in front of you, you're gonna start by curling your toes forward and then curling your toes back. So just your toes, not your whole foot yet. So curl your toes forward and curl your toes back. So our feet are our connection to the earth. And so we'll work our feet to improve our connection with the earth to begin with. And then you can point your whole foot forward and draw your whole foot back. And then circle your feet. And circle the other way. And circle so your toes meet in the middle. circle <laughs> the other way <laughs> okay now you're gonna take one foot and cross it over your leg and you're gonna hold on to it with your hand and you're gonna continue circling so circle your foot and then circle your foot the other way again. Okay, now you're gonna do, I'm gonna give you two options here. You're gonna pull on each toe as the first option. So you can actually just pull on each toe. If that kind of gives you the creeps, then what you can do is put a finger on the front neck of the toe and run your thumb down the back neck of your toe, okay? so that you're lengthening out each toe. And then you'll spread your toes and put your fingers between your toes. Get them right in there. It works, it works um, if you bring your hand from underneath, not over top. I see my students do that a lot of times. And then you're gonna bend your toes forward and back here. This is how we get those nice spread out yogi feet, toes. Okay, and then you can release that, and you're gonna place your foot on the ground. So here what you're gonna do is, you may have to use your hands to help you. Is that okay, can you see there? You're going to lift your big toe, just your big toe, while you leave your other toes down. So this is really important for gait. When you're walking, you push off with your big toe, so it's really important that this 
this, uh, these muscles in and around here are really strong to support that. And then what you're going to do is leave your big toe down and lift your four little toes. So you, again, you may need to use your hands to help you with that. Okay, now this one is really important. This next one is really great to help prevent bunions or if you have the start of a small one, you can uh, really tone up the muscles here to pull those bones back in because they just, they're just bones that have moved out. So if you strengthen this muscle here, you can pull those bones back in. So the way it works is you, you're gonna probably have to help your toe do this, but you move your toe out to the side. So out to the side. So one of the ways that I can kind of get it going is to lift my toe and move it over and then bring it back. <laughs> this one's really hard for me. So I'm going to help it along. <laughs> this toe likes to go up and down, but not side to side. <laughs> okay, then you can release that foot. Just feel the difference between your two feet. Actually, it can be really helpful right now if you just stand up for a moment, take a few steps, and feel the difference between your two feet. So, between the one that you've really worked and the one that you haven't, and just feel the difference between the way your relationship to the ground in both feet. And then have a sit back down and cross your other leg over, hold on to your other foot, and circle, begin to circle that ankle. And then circle the other way. And then you're gonna either pull on each toe or Stretch out each neck of the toe. And then spread your toes and get your fingers right in there. Stretch out your toes here and then bend them forward and back. Okay, and then you can release that and start with the big toe lifts. And the four small toes, whoops. <laughs> okay. You might find you can do it one way but not the other. And then do the one to help prevent the bunions, which is the big toe out to the side. Good. And then you can shake that out. From here, we're going to come into downward facing dog and continue to work with our feet in down dog. So hands a little bit forward of your shoulders, knees a little bit behind your hips, lift your sit bones up towards the ceiling, tuck your toes under, reach your hips right up, and then you're gonna be right up on the balls of your feet here. And when you do that, try and do it in a way that none of the toes lift off. Try and keep connected to all the, the balls behind your toes. And then you're going to roll sequentially through your feet. So if you're like me, you may need to walk your feet in just a little bit so that you can roll all the way down to your heels and then back up again.
Yeah, that's seven, one for each chakra. And then you can place the roof of your foot on the ground so you're stretching out the front of your ankle. It just feels so good. Take a break if you need one. Do that on the other side as well. Okay, and then come on down. And we're gonna do the roof of the foot one again. Now this isn't for everybody. Maybe that um, it's it's fairly weight bearing through the ankles, so you don't have to do it. You can go back to one foot at a time. I like a big stretch at the front of my ankles, so I offer this as an option. If you want to try, you can manage how much you go into it um, by not coming in as far. Also, it tends to be one that I think people with a lot of upper body strength manage well because you can kind of take some of the weight into your upper body too. So it's just moving through down dog again. You start. On the, in this table position, and then you come up into down dog on the roofs of your feet. Okay, and just come, just don't go too far. You can back off a bit if you want to, or you can stay with one foot. Okay, so it's totally up to you, but if you wanna try it, you start in table position, and you come on up. Okay, and then slowly lower down. The next one, if you have blocks, we're gonna use blocks. This is a great one to use the blocks for. You're just gonna place the blocks underneath your hands and place your left foot between them. The closer you have your right knee to your left heel, the easier this is gonna be on your hamstrings. So this one is to stretch out the muscles in your legs and we're gonna use it also particularly to track your knee to keep it moving straight really straight, imagining that you've got a knee brace here. So you'll curl your right toes under at the back, breathe in to prepare, and then breathe out and straighten your front leg. And then breathe in and bend, and breathe out and straighten. Breathe in, bend, breathe out, straighten. So you'll notice today that we're doing all postures that, that work with our feet and our legs. That's for the root chakra, and that's our connection with the earth too, with Mother Earth. And then straighten both legs and pause and stay here breathing. And then inhale and bend both knees and we'll just switch. So place your right foot in front of your left knee now. And here, the right leg, especially if you're right hand dominant, just tends to be a lot stronger and a lot tighter. So you may wanna decrease that space between your knee and your heel even more. And then you're going to tuck your left toes under the back, breathe in and breathe out, straighten. Breathe in, bend, and breathe out, straighten. Watching your right knee to track it to make sure it's moving straight up and down, not going wobbling to the sides at all.
And so that's the seventh one, one for each chakra. Stay here and breathe. And then you can walk your back foot in and come up slowly to standing. Okay, so from standing, stand with your feet hip width apart here. So again, underneath your hip bones. And what I want you to do is lift and spread your toes here. Reach your legs long down into the ground so that you're rooting just like a tree. Imagine that your pelvis is ground level, and that your legs are like roots that are going deep into the ground, deep into the earth. And you can roll your shoulders back and down, bring your ears over your shoulders. And here you're standing in Tadasana mountain pose, a really grounded posture, one where you really feel your legs lengthening and reaching into the ground. And as you pause here, just connect to your relationship to Mother Earth. Think about maybe the last time you walked around on, in bare feet on the ground, I, I know here in Canada, we've got lots of snow on the ground and we don't get out too much this time of year to connect to the earth. So things like going for walks in the woods are a great way to connect to your root chakra and to your mother earth, to your mother earth archetype. Okay, now shift over onto the, your right foot slightly. Turn your left toes out to the side. You can keep your toes on the ground here, or you can bring your foot up to the inside of your calf, or all the way up to the inside of your thigh for a tree pose. And then bring your hands to your heart. and then bring your hands up and overhead. And then let this posture out of your body shift over onto your left foot. Lengthen that left leg into the ground. This is the root system of your tree. Pick up your right leg. Toes can stay on the ground at the right side. Or your foot can come up to the inside of your calf. Or if you would like a more of a balanced challenge today, you can bring it all the way up to the inside of your thigh. Just not on your knee joint, above or below it. And then bring your hands to prayer position here in front of your heart. And bring it up and overhead. and then let this posture out of your body come and stand towards the front of your mat you take a generous step back with your right foot and let your feet again be especially for women hip width apart you're going to turn your hips to face the front of the room now if this torques your knee at all what you can do is just come up onto the balls of your feet on your back foot Okay, we're going to do warrior one pose. So you're going to sink down through your front left hip and arc your arms up. So in warrior one, you can really feel your legs. 
This is your connection to the earth, and we all need to be spiritual warriors and activists for the earth, for the well-being of our mother. Okay, and then release this side. Maybe shake out your legs a little bit. And this time your right leg will stay forward. You'll take a step back with your left leg. And this time, you know, if you try it, try a different way. If you didn't do it on the balls of your feet last time, then you can do it that way. This time, maybe your left foot on an angle at the back will work for you. You're going to sink down through your front right hip bone and arc your arms up. Sure, the posture from your body again. We're going to continue to work with our legs and our feet, the part of our body that is associated with the root chakra, our connection to the earth. Keep your feet underneath your hip bones. You're going to bring your arms straight up. You're going to inhale here, and then you're going to exhale, sit back as though you're sitting into a little chair, and we'll just begin to feel our legs here. So in this pose, it's important to keep the natural curve of your low back. So sometimes what I see is people will have a flat back here, it'll flatten right out. And then I'll also see real arches in the back. So somewhere in the middle, that might mean reaching your sit bones back a bit. It might mean tucking your tail under a bit, but it's gonna really be different for everybody. And then come on up. Shake out your legs. We're gonna do this one one more time, just in a slightly different way. So you're going to bring your arms straight out in front of you. Breathe in, breathe out and sit back, and then come up onto the balls of your feet. So this is called awkward pose. You can see why. and then come on up and shake out your legs. Great. So, so far we've been connecting to the earth through our legs and our feet, which works really well because we're working with the root chakra. But now we're gonna take our legs and feet off the ground and, and bring them up the wall and rest our torso on the ground to get a sensation of grounding through the upper body. So you're gonna need to clear space, pay, place of wall. If you can't do that, you could just get a chair and put your feet, legs up on a chair here. So the way to do this is to put your hip right against the wall and then swing your legs around and up. And what I definitely don't want to do is to kick Sandy's beautiful painting here. <laughs> So once you settle in, you want the back of your pelvis to rest against the ground, as close to the wall as you can get it. And then you rest here, your legs get a break. And all the blood that's usually pulled by gravity down to your feet gets to come back up and into your heart.
Okay, so this could be a really great place if you're watching at home where you can pause your tape and even stay here and rest here for 10 to 20 minutes. So great for your body. Very rejuvenating, great way to recharge your batteries. So if you have the time to do that, I encourage you to pause your, your player and to stay here for an extra 10 or 15 minutes. Maybe even up to 20 minutes. You'd want to come down. I usually find a good time to come out is when my legs start tingling and going numb and I need more blood flow. Okay, so from here you're going to roll to your side and I'm gonna actually get you to come onto your stomach now. And so lie down on your stomach. Your elbows are gonna be shoulder height. Your arms are gonna be at right angles. And you're going to turn your head to one side. And what we're gonna do here is an exercise that I learned through Feldenkrais, which is, a, Feldenkrais works with repeating primary movement patterns that you made when you were a baby, when you knew how to move right before you unlearned the right way of moving. So this exercise is really simple. You're gonna breathe in, and as you breathe in and fill your, feel your lungs fill with air, you'll lift your head, and then you'll breathe out and you'll slowly lower it down to the other side. So breathe in and lift, and breathe out and lower. And breathe in and lift, and breathe out and lower. So this movement mimics the rooting that a baby does to its mother for nourishment in the same way that we can root to Mother Earth for nourishment. And then you can take your hands underneath your shoulders, push yourself up onto all fours, and rest back on your heels for child's pose. And slowly make your way up to sitting. So sit with your legs straight out in front of you. And then bend your, you wanna check that the, your back of your pelvis is perpendicular to the ground. So a lot of times in seated twists, I'll see a really rounded back and pelvis. And as much as you can, lift and sit straight up, okay? And then we've been playing around with this in our class too, of lining up our sit bones, to our heels here. So a lot of times people will cram their foot right in. You can see this actually isn't a very good alignment through your leg, it sits out, rather than good alignment from your ankle to your knee to your sit bone. And when you do that, you'll just feel how, how much better it feels in your whole leg. And then wrap your right arm around your left leg and turn toward it. Place your left hand at the base of your spine to lengthen your spine up.
And then come on back center. Release your left leg out. Bend your right leg in. Press your right foot into the ground. Lift up nice and tall. Wrap your left arm around your right leg. Turn towards it. Place your right hand to the base of your spine and lengthen up. And then turn back center. Here's where your, your folded up blanket become, can come in really handy. You can take it and place it behind you and then sit up on it. And that'll lift your pelvis a little bit so that it's more easily tilting forward. That's what you really want it to be doing here is tilting forward. And then what you're gonna be doing is bending your legs and reaching around and holding onto the outside edges of your feet, resting your forehead down here. And I want you to stay there and breathe like that. If this is too challenging, then you can always use your strap around your feet. It's kind of nice if you um, circle them around, it works really nicely. So right here, hands on the outside edges of your feet, stay connected through your torso and your legs, and then you're gonna rest your head forward and breathe. And when you feel breath movement in the back of your body and your spine, then you can move your heels forward just a little bit. Stay connected through your torso and your legs and pause here and breathe. Again, when you feel breath movement in your back and your spine, walk your heels forward just a tad and pause here. And just keep doing that slowly, making your way forward. And then there'll come a point where this feels like it's good for you to stop in your legs and to maintain that connection between the tops of your thighs and your belly. And then you can pause and stay there. Shoulders stay dropped away from your ears, stay lengthened through your spine. And then you can slowly release that. So that's one way to work with Paschimottanasana that I quite like. You're gonna take your blanket out from underneath you. After that kind of a forward fold, you're gonna need a back bend. So palms turn out slightly, roll your shoulders back and down, lift your chest, tuck your tail under and lift up. Doesn't have to be a huge lift. And then Slowly lower down, and you can lie down on your back, draw your knees into your chest before you rest down for Shavasana with your legs long on the ground. So I'm going to finish today's practice with a poem from the book called Earth Prayers. And this is a, a poem about the earth by Nancy Wood. Earth, teach me stillness as the grasses are stilled with light. Earth, teach me suffering as old stones suffer with memory. Earth, teach me humility as blossoms are humble with beginning. Earth, 
teach me caring as the mother who secures her young. Earth, teach me courage as the tree which stands all alone. Earth, teach me limitation as the ant which crawls on the ground. Earth, teach me freedom as the eagle which soars in the sky. Earth, teach me resignation as the leaves which die in the fall. Earth, teach me regeneration as the seed which rises in the spring. Earth, teach me to forget myself as melted snow forgets its life. Earth, teach me to remember kindness as dry fields weep with rain. Thank you for joining us for episode 64 of Namaste Yoga. I want to thank so many of you who have friended us on Facebook. You can look for us on Facebook at Namaste Yoga. And I want to thank so many of you for your kind donations, especially right before Christmas. I really appreciate them. We're doing our best to continually improve Namaste Yoga for you. And so all your donations make a big difference. Thank you so much. Namaste. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.